Welcome in everyone to the last, poss uh, possibly the last episode of Scholar Rain, session 12, titled Life, Death, and the Promise of Tomorrow. Last time on Scholar Rain, the Queen's Lament journeyed north, uh, reuniting with Ariko Sunvale as they headed towards a staging ground that had been set up in the God's Grass Forest just outside of Moon Bay. There, they got to meet a couple of people, one of them by the name of Brunar, uh, another by the name of Kachiko, who turns out is Miriani's sibling. Uh, they also met a very angry and ready to go uh, half or a halfling. Uh, and there they planned out the jailbreak of Moon Bay, its liberation. Uh, a plan was hatched to steal one of the uh, uh, steal the marking that is used to allow people to use magic within the anti-magic field of Moon Bay. Uh, the party was escorted in, uh, masquerading as prisoners, uh, where they were then able to overthrow the rather light guard in the early morning and, uh, well, get access to the prison. A massive explosion was heard moments later as the plan continued and explosives were brought in to detonate the research facility uh, within the science ward, uh, the research and development ward, to uh, shut down the anti-magic field. And at that point, while Ariko and her accomplices set off to go start freeing prisoners, the Queen's Lament journeyed to the Warden's Tower, ascending to the highest level where they confronted the High Wraith of Sill, Lady Morgan Atrosk. And uh, unsurprisingly, things did not resolve amicably. As a fight broke out, uh, it was discovered that many of the... Um, uh, that the people held in the gems here were being used uh, to fuel Lady Morgan... And uh, as she began the battle, a ferocious combat ensued, uh, near the end of which Lady Morgan Artrosk tried to reason with Laki, whom she called Scala, to return with her. And when the young child was unwilling to, she used power word kill on Rhea to de demonstrate a point. And that is where we left off. So... our combat music. So watching Rhea collapse to the ground, Laki stares in horror. In an instant, the woman she'd begun to call her mother had fallen lifeless, and a rage built in her unlike anything she'd ever known or imagined. Gritting her teeth and clenching shut her eyes to try to hold back tears, she let out a piercing scream as divine energy began to flicker off her skin. And suddenly she takes off running at full speed towards Rhea. And as Lady Atrosk opens her mouth to speak, the young child bells out, Shut up! Cookie! Make her shut up! And she hurls the doll right at the High Wraith of Sill. And a massive, ancient black dragon begins to appear, appear in the room, expanding out to many times its normal size. The room suddenly feels very crowded as the ancient black dragon takes shape within it. And skidding to her knees next to Rhea, she begins to shake her desperately. Eh, go there. Thank you. But... Meanwhile, Rhea, mm -hmm. you are somewhere else entirely. At first impression, it seems to be a swamp all around you. Watery ponds pool near the side of the softly beaten trail beneath you. It's incredibly quiet here, as if even the insects respect the dead that walk among here. You gaze down at your ghostly hands, and it only takes a moment to understand what must have happened. You begin to walk through the Geist Moor, finding a subtle beauty in it. The peace and tranquility of it, you can barely remember what had you so worked up. 
Why was it such a bad thing to be here? It was peaceful and quiet here. It was nice. Hey, Captain, says a very familiar voice. No less so because it's using the nickname she's called you since the day you were married. Standing there amid the fronds and brush is Adana. She slowly approaches, her ghostly hair falling over one eye as she smiles genuinely. I've been waiting for you. Hey. She's just... Can ghosts hug? Is that a yeah. thing? Yeah, you could hug her. She's just gonna kind of collapse into her arms. Mm -hmm. She catches you. And hugs you very tightly. And smiles. <sighs> How many years have I waited for this moment? I'm sorry the little ones can't be here to say hi. They've been reborn. Or they will be. They've gone on. But I wanted to wait. Rhea looks like she's uh, not really able to form words. Mm -hmm. She smiles and just hugs you very tightly, stroking a hand through her hair, through your hair. I missed you. I missed you too. It. You dying, it broke me. From what I've seen, it's made a hero out of you. Maybe eventually. <clears throat> well, I guess I take some satisfaction in knowing that my passing brought you to such greatness. The little girl is sweet. I... You'd like her. I do like her. I'm still watching, you know. Hey... I'm sorry for what you had to see then. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of pain. You suffered. You all did. But it's done my heart good to see you make friends again. Maybe I shouldn't have taken so long. <laughs> well, the point is you did. And it took the time it took to get you to where you are. You look better like this. I like I like Paladin Rhea more than I like serving a demon like Rhea. I do too. Lorelei. I suppose we're together now. But she's still there. I know. Your friends will watch over. And then she stops and glances off as if seeing something or being called to. And she frowns. But quickly, she forces that frown away and puts on a warm smile. It's not your time yet. Her 
voices, equal parts, cheerful and longing at that. I'm glad I got to see you at least. Me too. I'll be waiting here. You know it's my time? No matter how long it takes. Back at the battle, as Cookie rears back and spews out a stream of powerful acid all across the high wraith of Sill into the back of the room, it's so potent that it eats clear through the wall and the morning light spills into the room. And this is, as this is happening, Laki expends a sorcery point to change her lunar phase to full moon. And with the small moon Ceres now visible in the morning sky, she uses the revivify spell which she casts on Rhea. Which means... Uh, which means, Rhea, you may have one life point, one hit point. The most important one. Oops, sorry. I clicked the wrong button and I moved your token to somewhere that you can't get to it. The one that keeps I was gonna you say, playing. I think you stole my token. I did. There you go. Now you should be able to. Life is a resource. Life is a resource when you think about it. <laughs> classic, classic black sh shenanigans. I was about to say, especially if you play black in magic. <laughs> um, all right. And Lady Atrosk and this uh, demon protector uh, let's see. Lady Atros could just use power word death, so wouldn't her turn be over? Oh, her turn is over. She's getting ready to make a save against be having acid spewed on her. Mm-hmm. A whole fuckload. Yes. Ancient Black mm. Dragon's Acid Breath. A 90-foot line, 10-foot wide. Each creature in that line makes a DC 22 dex save. Okay. Is uh, mm -hmm. Shadow Delen in that? Um, no, I think it could be positioned to not hit Shadow Delen. All right, cool. I feel like I'm anyway. going to regret oh, asking. What that. happens to the elven captives back here? <laughs> Probably melts. Um, let me see if that line works. Uh, one sec. Let's see. Is the dragon on the map or no? It's not right now. Okay. Because it's only going to be here for the one move that right, it's going right, to right, do. Right. Uh, nope, I can get both of them without hitting Delen and without uh, hitting either of the Elven Captives. Well, oh, it's not a... I don't it's know a why line. I thought it was a cone. Yeah, this it's one's a, a line. It's a line. Either way, one of these uh, Captives is not going to do well if it takes her low enough. All right. Um, so, the Golbrezu failed... Lady Artrosk failed, but she's going to use a legendary resistance. Uh, so that's going to be 15d8 acid damage halved for Lady Artrosk. Yikes. Oh, please melt this go, Brezu. That is going to be 67 damage. Uh, and that Glabrezu has gone from looking very healthy to very not healthy. Same. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. With that, that was Lady Atrosk's turn. Um... Delen. just... I just tried to use Baldur's Gate keys to move the map on roll 20. Oh, I that see. Didn't work. Um, it is the Demon Protector's turn, and then it will be Delenn's turn. Okay. Yep. Uh, which Demon Protector? This one. All right. Uh, the Demon Protector is going to uh, cleave through Shadow Delenn. He can try. He can try. Uh, four attacks. Uh, First one the, misses. What's the AOE that we're in again? Uh, cloud kill. Okay. First one misses. Second one misses. Third one hits because it crits. 
But he only has one HP, so it doesn't matter. Uh, um, I negate crits because of adamantium armor. Right, so it's a normal hit on him. Which is how much? Uh, wow. Uh, 29. Okay, that barely hits. Oh, okay. So, uh, after cleaving through him, he's going to move on over towards you and try and hit you. I'm going to assume a 16 misses. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right, Delenn, you are up. I got shit to do, Demon Protector. Uh, how's he looking? Uh, Pretty ragged, I would say. He is bloodied and then some. All right, let's... This is the one that just got burned by acid real fucking yeah. bad. Uh, let's summon Shadow Delenn over by this elven captive so I can keep smashing stuff. Yep. Um... All right, so we will. How do I play Echo Knight? How to Echo Knight? How, how, how do Echo Knight? Uh, all right, so we will. Um. No, it doesn't matter because there's someone shout out So bonus action is gone. All right, so we will go ahead and swing on this fool. And in doing so, if I have any precision strikes left, I'm going to use one. I do. All right. So if the attack hits, I get to add a D8 to the damage. Oh, and I get advantage. All right. So swinging on him, that's a natural 20. All right. Fuck him up. All right. That's a way to Fuck him up. Uh, okay. So that's going to be... 2d8s for the precision strike, 2d8s for the long sword, um, d8 for my radiant damage. Yes. I don't have enough d8s, so I'll just roll two more after this. All right, so that will be 12 magical bludgeoning damage. Um, another eight magical bludgeoning damage, and then sixteen radiant damage. All right, for a Plus total eleven. Uh, my my just my regular attack modifier. You're getting damage onto that, so then an eleven, another eleven slashing damage. Total. Um, total that was twelve. 20, 36, 47 damage total. Ooh, he is dead. Thank you. Uh, As you then... uh, rear up, draw Echo, and just start tearing into him, the, uh, or not, yeah, Echo Lux Lorsenen, and, uh, yeah, the radiant energy flickers off, burning his flesh away, the already acidically burned flesh. Uh, and you know, he's kind of like, you know what, fuck this place, I'm good. Um, so in that case, I will move here. Shadow Delen will move up here. Um, and if I remember correctly, these have high AC, but low HP. That is correct. All right, well, let's see what we can do here. Uh, so I'm going to use an attack, uh, another one of my attacks on Delen, and uh, one of my unleashed incarnation attacks on Shadow Delen. Okay. Oh, well that is super unfortunate. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, Echo has uh, the ability that once per day, if I miss, I can choose to hit. So, oh, yep. Uh, Shadow Dylan misses, but I'm going to choose to hit with myself. And okay. Deal. Fuck you, dice. Um... 19, or, well, it's a mix of radiant. It, well, no, it's only one radiant. So 18 bludgeoning damage, one radiant damage. You shatter the crystal that this elven captive was held in, and they drop to their knees, kind of <gasps> catching their breath as they come back to reality. If I remember correctly, the last one was able to get out on their own, right? Yep, they can get out on their own. Okay. So I have 5, 10, 15 more movement there.
Oh shit, no, hold on, I still have one more attack. Uh, so Jalen will use my other attack to try, or Shep to try and break this one. Um, uh, you get four attacks? I did one attack on the Glob Rezu. I did one attack here in Shadows. The Shadow Delen's attack was my release incarnation. Got it. Which he gets to attack when I attack. So this is the this is my third attack. Got it. Uh, twenty eight. Hits. For oh you piece of shit. Um, twelve bludgeoning, one radiant. It cracks it, but it doesn't break it. Why are you so useless? <laughs> Fifteen I, HP. Yells, he yells at the shadow thing. You hear a throaty cackle come from inside the poisonous no, you know fog what? cloud. Okay, I'm going to use my precision strike at D8 to that. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Did um, you roll a five? It's a one, wasn't it? It was a two, so an additional oh. two damage. Oof. On top of 12? Yeah. It has one HP left. God damn it, Rafi. Jesus Christ. They are 25 AC, 15 HP. Oh. Nothing else that I can do to do one more piddly Sneeze. piece of damage. Sneeze on it. Okay. That's, oh, I that's... have her skill. Her character skill too. It, I guess. All right. I need to have Lockheed's character sheet up so that I can have her do things. I yell at the person in there. Just just bang it. Just punch it. <laughs> punch it real hard. Yep. Make it fall on the floor. All right. Um, it is Lockheed's turn. And she... Ooh, she did not like the look of that big thing in front of her. Uh, she's going to cast Death Ward on Rhea. Does that do again? Uh, the next time, the first time you would drop to zero hit points, you instead go to one hit point. Nice. Yeah, she's she's literally having a "Don't you do that again to me." Uh, spell slot spend. Yes, there we go. Uh, so you have Death Ward on you, Rhea. Uh, and then uh, she's going to uh take it that she is probably supposed to not be here. Because uh, she was told very clearly, you're not supposed to be here. And uh, she's going to hurry back over towards the stairs. That's... Oh. Oh, no. What? Uh, that is Lockheed's turn. Rhea, you're up. Oh, wait. At the end of her turn, uh, uh, Lady Atrosk will use a legendary action. Um, there are none very close to her. So she will cast a cantrip. I guess she will cast Ray of Frost. Uh, she's going to Ray of Frost Miriani. No, 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 no. Do the, do the crystal thing that I was hitting. No. She's going to Ray of Frost Miriani. Miriani does a 24 hit. Yes. Okay. We're going to do 4d8 icy damage then. Too bad we don't have a rune knight that could just go, no, actually, you hit that crystal instead. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 21 damage to you, Mariani, and your um, movement speed is reduced by 10 until the start of your next turn. Uh, Sarah, you are, sorry, Rhea, you are up. That was her legendary action. Right. First up, I'm going to stand up. Uh, yeah. I don't remember. Did I free this one or was it? That one is freed, yes. Okay. Um... Okay, I kind of thought it wasn't. So that changes things a little bit for me. I think Sarah actually finished breaking that one open. Um, yeah, so I think that got hit. Nice. It's a bonus action. Though. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna... Uh, okay. We're gonna do a 
turn that would make Lockie very happy. Uh, action, I'm going to dump the last 25 of my Lay on Hands into myself. All right. And... Where... Oh, bonus action. Eh. Get 11 more from Second Wind. Nice. You feel healthier after touching yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How it goes. It do uh, like that. I think I'm good there. All I right. really don't want to step forward and get the bad hug. That's fair. Bad hug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sarah, you are up. I don't like how those HP pulls look. I'm going to revert the Moonbeam to its orb form at the moment. I am still concentrating on it. I have to redo it as an action every single turn if I want to use the attack again. And I am going to do a Mass Cure Wounds at okay. fifth level. This will hit Miriani, this will hit Rhea, and this will hit me. Okay. As I am going to center it on myself. All right. And... Uh, let's go. Twenty-three HP to everybody, or to those who are targeted, and I cannot select my token. That's odd. Try uh, refreshing yeah. the page. Uh, <laughs> might need to do that. Is it a free action to look at the spooky lady and go? I didn't hear no fucking bell. <laughs> you can't see her at the moment, Thank so you, you can't actually. You can look in her direction. I'll do that. Fair enough. What's the what's the the meme with uh, Harrison Ford in the bed? Uh, I forget what, what he said. Uh, something like, like I'm just I'm back, bitch, or I didn't die or something. Oh. Uh, anything else there? That'll be it for right now, is I don't want to take any extra attacks at the moment that I don't need to. All right. Demon Protector is up. Uh, it's going to start cutting into Sarah. Yep. Um, oh, I lived, bitch. That's what it is. 24? Hit your AC. 24 will hit. Uh, 16 bludgeoning damage. And I need you to make an escape grapple check. All right, oh, no. Sorry. You are just grappled. On your turn, you can try to escape. All right. I pass the constitution saving throw. All right. Great. Uh, um, and I am just grappled. That is fine. Uh, and I took how much? Uh, you took a 16 on that first hit. And then it's going to cast Dispel Magic on your Moonbeam. Um, that's illegal. I asked Jeremy Crawford. He said that's illegal. Oh, okay. You said at third level? Uh, it just has as an at-will spell. I assume it casts at third level, yeah. DC 16 spell casting check for it to dispel it. All right. Whatever uh, its spell casting ability intelligence. is. Hashtag Calicor. Yep, I rolled a one. So Oof. I would do it's it. It's up. All right, it survives. Um, it'll just make its last pincer attack then, which it also misses. Cool. Miriani, you are up. Uh, real quick, I'm going to let my captives go run away 5 10 15 20 25 30 dash 5 10 15 20 25 30 you are out of here and same for you probably 5 10 so 15 yells, 20, go 25, live 30. be free 5 10 knowing 15, that they're 20, probably going to die on their way out of the building yeah, i mean it seems likely uh, all right miriani you are up um, so for some reason, I want to say that the circle on here is a cloud kill, right? Yes, it is. Okay. 
Oh, see, I know what you're thinking about doing, and I'd really prefer you not. Are, do you? Yeah. I have several things I'm thinking about doing. Oh. I was also just making sure my memory was correct. Yes, your memory is correct. Um, if it starts blowing, it's heading towards the entrance, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Um. So, that counts as obscuring stuff, right? Yes, she's invisible at the moment. How about... The spell specifies that... One of the spells I'm thinking about specifies that I cast it on an area of ground that I can see. How would you rule that in this instance? What spell are you looking to cast? That one that I'm considering is um, Ivard's Black Tentacles. I would probably allow that. Okay. Um. Are you about to hentai Lady Artrosk? Again? I'm thinking about it. Let's go. <laughs> It's that or probably what you were assuming I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. Which would be also Dispel. Um, what did, what did the rest of y'all think? Should we let that stand? Because I can just get rid of it. <laughs> the The cloud kill? Yeah. It's doing nothing but benefiting them because they have crew sight. And yeah, we'll, have, we'll have to deal. We'll have okay. to deal with it at some place, regardless, even if we're not in it right All now. All right. Yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just dispel that. And you do. And she is say. once again revealed, uh, standing uh, in front Technic of her throne. Technically, I have to roll because I'm not upcasting. But oh, yeah. Uh, as long as I don't roll a one, I dispel it because all of the stuff you gave us gives me a plus 14. Tally core. Tally well, core. Hashtag Robbie core. Hashtag Robbie I can, core. I can dispel it on a two. <laughs> Hashtag Cali core. No, you are the Cali here. That's a three. So, oh. yes, it was Cali core. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still core. The no, total no. is 17 and the DC was 15. Cali core is only a one on that roll. Cali core is wherever you Cali need to fail. Failing. Yeah. Okay, fair. Fair. All right, Miriani, anything else? So we did that, and uh, we're going to step away because we want to spread out and not be targets. Yeah, oh, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have five more feet. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. End of your turn. She will use a legendary action to do another ray of frost. Uh, which this one she is going to try and blast Lockheed with. Uh, I have a quick mechanics question. All right. Uh, so the channel divinity, um, the shield of light one. Oh, from okay, yeah, sorry, I forgot. I was pretty when, when do I have to decide that? Can I when decide they that get after hit. mirror image? Yes, when they get hit, you can decide to instead make the attack go against you, and if the attack roll would still hit you, then it hits you instead. Okay. Uh, well, it's definitely going to hit her. Uh, well, sorry. Let me see if it gets past her mirror image. It does not, so it, it hits a mirror image instead. Oof. Bitch got mirror images up. Lucky does. Yeah, Lucky had him up. That's what oh, the uh, markers are on her. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, another blast goes through, through, and you have like a moment of panic, Rhea, as you just see like uh, this girl like get frozen solid and shatter, but then uh, you see another Lucky like peek out and like, huh? Oh, okay. Lindell, stop peeking just because you don't get hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. I heard her shout reloading. 
Yeah. Oh that's god. <laughs> it's like an apex when people are shielding and they peek around the corner and then you just get shot because you don't have shields up now. Yeah. Stay in cover. No. Okay. No. <laughs> I won't. I won't do it. Um. Hmm. All right. Well. Fuck all y'all. She's gonna drop a fireball on Rhea this and Sarah. This is why we unclump. Yeah, I know. And I was really is, hoping you wouldn't well, do that. I. It, that was gonna be a bad time if I lost that. Shit. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. This is, come off of this is why I did the cure. All right. Um, it is a DC 20 dexterity save. Okay. Doesn't doesn't that Glubrezu also have to make it? He does. Yes, he does. Okay. I'm just double checking to make sure I don't have anything like Aldana does that affects my deck save somehow. I don't think so. Nope. I don't think <laughs> Knowing I Knowing what I know of my paladin, you don't. Uh, I, gonna, I don't think I do, but like... Ooh, All right, well. so... Is he also resists to fire? Okay, yeah, he's not going to take much damage at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, fuck, do I have inspo? I might have inspo on Rhea. It's been a minute. All right. And if you fail, me... it's 29 damage if you succeed it's 14 all right let me roll the constitution saving throw for advantage um that'll be a 17 so yeah succeeds yep because warcaster bitches if i didn't have that i failed that save and that was a bad time to waste a six level like that I already wasted my elemental form. All right, and then she's going to move. Oh. Over to here. And that will be her turn. Delenn, you are up. You better run away. Uh, it's debatable whether she's running away. Stupid shadow couldn't even come up and destroy the stupid glass. <laughs> you had one goddamn job. First attack, that's going to hit. All right, can't that, do lower than one damage. That, that elven captive is free. You move, I think, ten. All right, first, uh, the elven captain that I'm next to. Uh, that's a natural one, so I miss. So third attack. That's... 29 to hit. That'll hit. For 24 damage. Yep. That shadow, that captive is free. Was that and the one you hit or the one Shadow Delen hit? That's the one that I hit. Shadow okay, Delen so these two are free. Is now taking his attack, which is one of my Unleash Incarnations. Um, that is... 25 to hit? I think you said that, that meets. That meets. Yep, that meets. Okay. Motherfucker. I swear to God. Uh, Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm uh, 14 damage. I'm putting, a, oh. my last, my, I'm putting my last precision strike on it. Okay. Okay, it shatters. All okay, right. for her not getting a full heal anymore, I declare that worth it. Yep, I would say so. Uh, all right, all the elven captives have been at least freed from their uh, crystals. Anything else, Lem? Um, I think I was here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I think he has all of his. He's done all his movement. So that is it. All right, Laki is up. Uh, I think at the end of my turn, I'm going to yell over uh, uh, to Lady Atrocious. Um, you ready to go meet Iris now? That's where we're sending you. <laughs> she uh, gives a rather disdainful look at the idea of even being mentioned in the same breath as Iris. Yeah, you're going to spend an eternity with her. Hmm. Well, that's not a pleasant thought. Um, you can hear her talk about her ex for all of eternity. Oof. Oh, 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 oh. Yikes. 
A fate uh, worse than death, that is. Um. <laughs> all right, you know what? Go for it, kid. You got this. Uh, Laki is going to twin spell Firebolt. That will hit. And that will hit. Okay. She hit on both of them as she twin spells two massive blasts of fire out at Lady Atrosk for a total of 4d10 damage. Okay. Wow. That hit her very hard. That hit her real hard. Uh, yep. She's not immune to fire. Is she or resistant? She's not. Okay. Uh, she's looking pretty fucking ragged, and that is the end of Lockheed's turn. Rhea, you are up. I'm going to use, because uh, I didn't use my uh, bonus action, so I'm going to pop uh, second wind at the end of my turn. Now. Oh, okay. Uh, you said they're all free? What? All the captives are free or no? They're all free, yes. All right. Well, this bitch just walked into uh, gunblade range. Uh. Time Double for down. a continuation combo. Here we go. <laughs> Give her the old lion heart. Do Double down. Yeah, I was going to say, what's that one that's a whole lot of nines? Uh, lion heart. Yeah. Uh, were you doing something, Kelly, or mm -mm. am I good? You're good. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I do have one thing I want to do. Okay. Uh, she's gonna Did legendary I keep my action. Nat 20? You may keep your nat twenty. Oh god. Uh, you may keep your nat twenty. Uh, she is gonna use disrupt life at the end uh, as a legendary action. Cost all three of her legendary actions this round. Um, she is going to do. Uh, each non undead creature within twenty feet of the lich must make a DC eighteen <laughs> lich. Uh, must make a DC eighteen con save. DC eighteen con coming up. All right, so this will be yeah. the primary con save for... Are you a... shitting me? I only have a plus 13 to that. <laughs> Hold on. Cali Hold on. I'm fixing this. Do you have... Please tell me you have an inspo still cocked up and ready to go. If you fail the check, you take 21 necrotic damage, uh, half on a success. Thir oh, half on a success. I have money now. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, and I uh, All right. And then this will be so, the... Uh, yep. 21 necrotic on a fail, 10 necrotic on a success. I don't know why it keeps rolling three dice. But yeah, and I pass. What is, yeah, how the fuck is it doing that? I don't know why. I... I don't know. I'm just holding shift and doing the thing I normally do, and it's doing that for me. No. Uh, all right, Rhea, you're up, and yes, you may have your nat 20. Uh, okay, so... Hold on. I need to open this to see why I have multiple different, like, amounts of damage I can do. <laughs> Three long sword melee attack is. Let me ask you this. Oh, is it the, is D8 and D10 one handed or two handed? Yes. Okay. Yep. But then why is it D8 plus 10 or D10 plus eight? Uh, you probably have the fighting style that uh gives you yep. uh you more go. damage if you're fighting one handed. Yeah, that's a fighting style thing. Probably, uh, probably plus two damage if you're using a sword and a shield. Yep. Yeah. Oh, probably. But it's the I one don't Roz actually uses. have a shield yet for you some reason. You don't need reason. one. It's just the single wheel attribute, I think, on that. Yep. Okay. Roll as crit damage. Okay, that didn't roll the rest of it, apparently. Uh, so it's 1d6 radiant, and then pull the trigger is... Pull my devil trigger. Uh, 
Where is that in here? On the trigger, make a ranged attack, 2d8 plus charisma in addition. Oh, 4d8. Okay, so I need 1d6 and 4d8 radiant. 1d6 plus 4d8. Or 2d6, isn't it? Because crit. Yep. Yeah. 30 radiant and... You know what? Fuck this bitch. Third level divine smite. Appropriate. Uh, which is in my character sheet somewhere. They're not just an easy way that I can pick a level for Divine Smite. Uh, no, there is not. Okay, so 2d8. So if it's third level, yep, 4d8. She is an, uh, a fiend or undead, so 5d8. Okay, 5d8. Uh, so 10d8. Forty-eight rate more radiant, so fifty-three plus forty-eight is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Well, she only had nineteen HP, so Rhea, how do you want to do this? I think I'm just gonna literally blast her apart with divine energy. <laughs> I mean, just that is an effective way to do it. As you uh, hold your uh, gun blade up. Spin slash once, pull the trigger right on time, which blasts her back, makes her stagger back a step. And then you just hold the blade out, extending it towards her, and a pillar of divine light floods out of it and burns her into ash. Do you think her reaction is when she sees Iris? She is not going to be happy. I can, I can tell you that. As she collapses to the ground, Lady Morgan Etrusk clutches at her heart, her eyes wide with equal parts shock and horror. She begins to melt away into ash. Can't be. And she collapses forward in a heap as her body crumbles. And quiet falls over the room. Indeed, a quiet falls over the room. Rhea Lucky barrels into you and hugs you tightly. And as she does, you feel a cure wound spell running through you. What happens to the other gold brazo? Uh, it melts. Puts uh, his hands and goes, oh, "I'm sorry, guys. I'll just I'll see my way out." Yeah, basically. I'm, uh, I'm just gonna go. It didn't go how I thought I would. I was gonna say, I feel like at the point where she's down, he wouldn't be an issue. And yeah, we, we didn't we didn't like her either. If we're being if I'm being completely honest, <laughs> she was a real <laughs> bitch. Uh, you heal for twenty four, Rhea, as a uh, lucky channel some energy into you. Uh, Sarah, amid the ashes of the high wraith, you see her spell book, and the energies that you can feel emanating off of it are, uh, quote, not good. They feel, I ain't touching that thing. <laughs> they feel, <clears throat> they make you feel gross and slimy just looking at it. Uh, with that moonbeam I still have, I'm just gonna angle it appropriately oh. so I don't hit anybody else, and yep. I'm zapping that bitch. Uh, as you do, the wails of a thousand captured souls echo and scream through the room, uh, and the book burns into ashes. That, that's a lot of souls. Yeah. Now we'll dispel that. Uh. Outside, you can hear the chaos of the jailbreak. Sounds like it's going well. Obviously, there's now a big hole right around here so that you can, or sorry, it's uh, around here so that you can see uh, exactly what's happening out there. I'm just going to refresh this page because it's going slowly. Um, glancing out, you see uh, that the um, three uh, major uh, jail uh, cells, blocks, that's what I'm looking for, cell blocks, are uh, on fire, but not like, burning, like there's smoke rising up out of them, but it people are also fleeing out of that area, and they look like they were prisoners. So that's probably a good sign for how it's going. 
Uh, does anyone have any spells they want to cast or anything before they dare to venture outside? Yes. Uh, I would like to cast the wish spell to heal everyone in the prison who's a good guy up to full. Interesting. Um, Do you have the wish spell? Well, you asked me if there's any spells I wanted to cast. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. I'm, I'm just asking if you have the spell. No. Okay, so you can't cast it even I... though you want to. Wow. I will go okay. dire wolf form. And you said the there's a hole now in the wall where that dragon blasted, right? Yeah, there's now a big hole right here. Uh, I'm going to take Lady Atraska's body, and I'm going to dump it over the edge and let it splat on the ground, making a statement. Oh, well, uh, that does that does make a statement. It's mostly ash, so you got a, a mouthful of <laughs> ash after uh, that. Never mind, then. I'll yeah. stay in dire wolf form, though. Uh, okay, so you're in dire wolf form. Does anyone have else have anything they want to do? Uh, did you get mine for Lockie? Yeah, how much was it? 15? Yep. As her last mirror image falls away. Uh, anyone else? Anything? Uh, uh, how long enough to take a short rest? No. But you can pop potions, or you could uh, heal up if you want to. Hmm. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, I have a greater healing potion. That might be a good idea. Yeah, that's all I have. Lucky also has one, so she will pop it. Um, what is greater healing potion? Is it is it uh forty four plus four? Yeah, forty four plus four. <laughs> I just did four one four one. <laughs> all right. I I have another greater healing potion, which I will put into Miriani's hands. In the oh, okay. Say something along the lines of, you're only supposed to take hits like that if you're wearing armor like mine. I didn't really have control over it. Drink this anyway. And I would. It's schnozberry flavored. That means it's like eating ass. <laughs> That's what I hear. What? No, that that actually is like a a gay club like, like, reference like thing. Anime. Oh, I didn't know that. That caught uh, me off guard. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah, educational. The schnozberry is the buckle. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through her. She had like a desk, right? Uh, no, she had a throne. Oh. I'm going to search around the throne and see if there's anything cool. Um, You find a shock collar. So there's that. Um, You do find a couple of books. Uh, One of them oh, is... These are illegal. He mm. waves them around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and indeed, as you are kind of looking around, uh, emerging from the shadows in the back corner of the room... Worm tongue. Oh no. Fuck. He's here. God, mm. could you ever just leave us alone for one just second? Just go away! You so thirsty, you simp! Peering out of the shadows of the throne in the center of the room is the being you have come to know well over the last few months. Her fiery orange eyes shine through the darkness that seems to surround her, and you can tell even from this distance that she is livid. She's a sin. Not since the era of Sorrel himself has a group of people proven to be as utterly obnoxious as That's the lot me. of you. You destroy my tower, rout an entire legion of my army, Wreck my airship, assault my city, kill two of my wraiths, and you have the gall to steal my own child. Delen she snarls out correct, murderously. Corrects her. You destroyed your airship. We only stole it. Technically, the dragon destroyed her, their airship, but she's not failed. into playing. Uh, into playing, yeah, into dealing with the the minutia of it. And stepping out of those shadows, you see her fully now. Sanguine Moon hangs dangerously in her hand as she takes a step forward. Uh, does anyone have a passive perception of 15 or higher? 
I believe I do. Oh, man. 16, 19. yeah. Anyone oh, who has a 15 or higher. Insight. Damn it. Anyone who has a 15 or higher, you notice something. Over in the corner where the acid blast had burned a hole through the wall, you see a figure starting to climb through the hole there. Which you recognize as Ariko Sunvale. Mama Mirian. She is starting to climb through and is creeping towards Scala's back. Her steps are completely silent and her eyes are locked on this person, the gloom stalker focusing on her prey that she has sought for a very, very long time. Uh, Tara, on seeing that, is going to just growl at Scala as loud as she can. I'll step, seeing that, I'll step forward. Hello, how can we help you? Scala looks at you, Mariani. Look at the customer service voice. <laughs> uh, I step, I step in oh front of Mariani. Narrowing her eyes. I don't want anything of you except for you to die. Oh. And I will be taking my daughter back with me. Oh, that I'm I'm sorry, we can't we cannot do that. Uh, we're, we're all out. That's just a display one, but we can check in the back for you if you want. <laughs> this child is a display model. Jesus. Lockheed, if, we have looks another, over. if we have another session, Robbie, you're getting an inspo for that one. Lockheed <laughs> I'll looks, take an inspo right no, now if you want to give me give, one. Give, give Robbie an inspo. I like that. Yeah, that, Lockheed, that, was, that was good. Uh, Lockheed looks at Rhea and goes, Mama, what's a display model? And at hearing this child refer to you as her mother, Scala looks fucking incensed. But she's going to get stabbed. So let us roll for initiative, and uh, Ariko is going to earn herself a surprise attack. Uh, while she was there, I'm going to put up a bark skin to pump the AC as high as I can. Um, all right, so I have to use the Dire Wolf's physical stats for this. 14, and I forgot to click the damn character again. And I'll be right back. That's a 14 for initiative. I got another three. Here we are. You get it. Next time we play, you're playing a uh, Twilight Cleric, so you can start going at the top of the initiative order. <laughs> I don't. Maybe. Strict. Uh, no, see, wait. no, in the whispers, I always go really early because Callie fucking gave me advantage on those. I meant uh, Chronergy Wizard. That's that's what goes. Yeah, there you Halfling go. Halfling Chronergy Wizard, so you also have luck. <laughs> and, and then. We'll, and we'll get you a Dagger of Warning for advantage. Yep. And then. The one I'm it's now right. for, she's an assassin rogue, so like, she's got something else that like gives her a big bonus or something. I don't know. I've got like a plus eleven to my initiative on her. It's nice. ridiculous. Uh, I think Zana in the second chances has a plus fourteen with advantage, and I could pump it up higher. Yeah, let me pull that sheet up. But yeah, that one's ridiculous. Mir Miriani's talent lies elsewhere. She makes other people go fast. She doesn't go fast. Uh, all right. Uh, who needs to be added to the turn order? Delenda. Uh, Delenda. Uh, Miriani needs Miriani to be added does. to the turn order. Uh, Sarah got a fourteen. Rhea, Ariko, Scala. That's everybody. Okay, right.
Oh, All right. that bitch is about to get a big surprise. Man, he got an eight. Uh, yes, she is. Oh, and she's um, on top of the turn order. As Ariko is going to go first. As a Gloomstalker Assassin Rogue, she is going to get to do uh, every attack at advantage and every attack that hits is a crit. She will bonus action to put Hunter's Mark on Queen Scala. My queen. And she is also going, since she's a second level warrior, she's also going to use her action surge this turn. <laughs> uh, this was built to just be spike something. Because of Dread I Ambusher, she also gets to do an extra attack on each of her attacks. On each of her attack actions. So Can I she's, please see this character she's, sheet afterwards? Yeah. She's going to do six attacks at advantage, any that hit crit. And uh yeah, let's just see if how, the, how she what does on the that. Fuck. That'll hit. Okay, I don't need to roll that one twice. That'll hit. That'll hit. That'll hit. That will hit. Wow. All right. All six hit. <laughs> Holy shit. shit. So she will do six crits. The first one will have sneak attack on it for crit damage. And that oh. will work out to a total of 16d8 plus 18d6 plus 36 damage. For all of them or for that one? For the, That's all, her whole attack round. That's everything. Does that, that's them as crits as well? Yes. Don't that's, forget to oh, uh, add oh in God. all of the modify or the attack modifiers as well. I have, yes. It's six on that each attack, so plus, plus 36. 36. That's it. Oh my One god. Six damage in a single hit. Uh so she puts the hunter's mark up and as she uh basically pops up in shadows behind uh Scala, she growls out, This is for my family and my people, you bitch. And uh yeah, lightning quick, she uh puts six stabs clear through her, and the last one impales her clean through as she takes 186 damage. And Scala, her eyes widen in surprise. And then she kind of giggles a little bit as she turns her head back to look. <laughs> Do you hate me? And that is Ariko's turn. Uh, Rhea, you, uh, well, let me see if you're up. Uh, you're not up because for sure she's going to do a legendary action. Uh, Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. She is going to do a legendary action uh, and spell cast, and she is going to spell cast Hypnotic Pattern on the lot of you. No. Uh, let's see. I don't like Hypnotic Pattern. That's I good know. One. Uh, what is that uh, saving throw? It is sure. a wisdom save, and on a failed save, you are incapacitated. And she is uh, suffused with mana, so she rolls a d20. On a 10 or higher, she doesn't spend a spell slot. She rolled a 12, so she doesn't expend a spell slot to do it. Oh, that's saving throw. Damn yep. it. Rolled the wrong thing. Add plus 5 to that. What's the uh, DC we have to beat? The DC is 20. All right, well, that 21. was a one, so I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, inspo that I got earlier. Do you still have Indomitable? Nice. You. I've already used Indomitable. Okay. Ooh, 18, so oh, yeah. 21. Uh, also, remember to add five, because you're all next to Rhea. Ah, so 26. 26. Lucky rolled really well too. She got a twenty-seven. So did everyone save? Wait, that did sucks. anyone fail? No, no one failed. So I think as she Wait. casted that, Delenn would probably flinch a little bit, and then looking around at everybody and nothing happened, be like, "Wait, was was that it?" 
Uh, what was it? Sorry, I've been... Wisdom save, um, DC 20. Add five for Rhea. That's a no, but let me check if I have an inspo. Pretty sure I did. Yes, I did. And that was worse. So no, actually, it got me. Okay. No. So uh, you all watch as Miriani falls into a kind of hypnotic slumber as uh, she seems to be staring at these wavy patterns that have appeared before her eyes. She's just doing Miriani things. I was going to say. Yeah, I don't she's know really always kind anything... of in a hypnotic trance. Yeah, really off right now. Yeah, we, you may not notice the difference until she doesn't do anything on her turn. Uh, all right, uh, Rhea, your turn. Um, well, I mean, there's the obvious solution. <laughs> I go up Is, and do paladin things. I go up and do paladin things. Break, uh, break concentration. Uh, eh. <laughs> oh god damn it! She really did it! Something oh something god. paladin things. Something yeah, something so... something paladin crit again. Second no one, no one's fight. like, get her mama! Oh! Yep. So Rhea's just gonna walk up, stab her through the front. My daughter. <laughs> Good line. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, okay. <laughs> So, roll that crit damage. Uh, and then, oh god, still, Jesus Christ, Rhea. Okay. 2d6 and 48, so that radiant. And then it would be 8d8 for second level, right? Yes. Uh, yes, 8d8. Uh, so 21, 41, 55. Ow. Yep. That does 55 damage, all right. That was my last second level spell slot. All right. I assume you'll want to attack again. I would like to, yes. Fair enough. Mm. 20 hit. Uh, 20 meets, but she is going to use superior parry uh, to give herself a plus five uh, bonus against the melee attack. And Point since of order, it. flanking. Oh, yeah. Well, plus five, though. Yeah, plus five, so it, she doesn't hit. Uh, and uh, if she avoids being hit using superior parry, she may immediately make a single attack with Sanguine Moon against the target. I'm going to use, well, mm, yeah, I'm going to use Shadow Martyr to make Shadow Delen take that attack. I can do this once per long rest. All right. Uh, I won't bother attacking. Well, hold on, because if it misses him, he doesn't die. Oh, okay. Well, she's got a very good plus to hit. Uh, yeah, 30 to hit. Okay, bye, sh bye. Flies off to the side of this. <laughs> yeah. As he is impaled through. Um, you notice something, uh, Delenn, as this happens. He doesn't poof like they normally do. Normally they don't. They sit around and be dead for a while, but. He doesn't do that either. As he is stabbed, he kind of flickers a little bit, and something horrific comes across his face as his essence is torn from him and absorbed into Sanguine Moon. And then his body just falls limp. Uh, Lockheed's turn. One shadow Martyr. So nobody uh, else get hit by anything, because I can't do that again. <laughs> I only get to do it once. Um, she will use a legendary action to make an attack with her scorpion's tail. 
on to Ariko, who made the classic mistake of getting close to the scorpion's tail. Ooh. Don't do that. Yeah, that's 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 gonna hurt. Uh, it will hit, and it's gonna deal 16 magical piercing damage plus an additional 20 poison damage, so 36 total. And uh, they must make a DC 20 con save to avoid being poisoned. She's they, they just outside of Rhea's. Well, they nat 20 on it, so they aren't poisoned, but they uh, don't feel very good. You hear her scream out as she still has her weapon impaled in Scala and the scorpion tail impales into her and she just keeps pushing forward. She has been preparing for this moment for a long time. Uh, Laki is up. And Laki is going to do sorcerer things. Oh, she is getting low on spell slots. Uh, how long does that death ward last? Does she still have that on you? Eight hours, great. Uh, she is going to spend the rest of her sorcery points to put a haste on Delen. Uh, no. She's going to put a haste on Sarah. Whoops. Delen died because he didn't get haste. That would be brutal. <laughs> and she's going to put one on Rhea. Because I didn't learn my lesson last time about having the NPC fucking haste a paladin. Alright. End of her turn. Another legendary action. Uh, Queen Scala is going... Spell cast And she is going to cast Oh god What are the odds of actually sticking that She's going to cast Banishment on Delenn But I'm from this realm I know I get to send you to a random other realm <laughs> I'll just know if you land somewhere is that's not the divine realm or the wiz, void. Is banishment it's a, a the cheese thing. realm. It is. Oh, you're a bitch. <laughs> the lead just looked around. Ah, oh, fuck. This Actually, it might up. be charisma. Let me check. Because I feel like it was one I was happy about for Roz. That'd it is charisma. Bit, I mean, okay, and you are within 10 feet of Rhea. Oh, that's better. All right, so I have a plus 13 to this. Bah! Natural 20. Not that I fucking need it here, but... All right. Well, I will not be sending you away to a fun yep. and interesting realm. Okay. So she no casts another spell for you. that doesn't seem to do anything, and he's going to look to Rhea and go, has Scala always just been a bitch this whole time? Okay. Well, it's her turn now. Uh, yeah, she... now it's her turn. You're... You might be about <laughs> to have to learn. Um... I think Arika is about to learn. <laughs> I think Arika is about to learn. Uh, yeah. She is going to make an attack with Sanguine Moon on Rhea. Yay. 27 to hit. Yeah. That is going to do 17 magical slashing plus 20 necrotic. Uh, okay, I don't have Necrotic Resist on Rhea. So 37? Yep. And you need to make a DC 20 con save or suffer a point of exhaustion. Okay, roll 7 or above. Got it. It's an 8 on the dice. 21. Alright, you do not suffer the point of exhaustion. Um, she will uh, also attack you with her Demonic Claws. Uh, for... Does a 24 hit? Add yep. your haste AC. Oh, wait, haste... What is haste? Two? Two. Plus two AC. Okay, well, my AC is 23 then. All right, so she hits. 
Uh, it's going to be nine magical slashing plus ten necrotic. Unless... No, I don't have actual shield. Okay. You're at no. three HP. And you are inflicted with a demonic wound. Yay, I'm going to slowly bleed. Uh, all right. Uh, that is the end of her turn. Delen, you are up. Oh, it's me now, huh? Yep. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. She has to do a scorpion a tail attack, too. Fuck her up. Uh, that'll be enough to hit, and so it'll be enough to put Ariko to zero. So Ariko, as the as the uh, tail embeds further into her, she kind of chokes up blood over it, and then just hangs limply as she passes out. Okay, I'm gonna move up to here. We're gonna summon Shadow Delen over here with our bonus action, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'm gonna take three attacks, and I have three release incarnations left. So we're gonna use Don't all hurt. of those as well. So this is six attacks. Okay. I don't care if she has like 150 HP left or something. Kill her. Let me uh, let me know who's doing which attack. Yep. All right. So first, uh, Delen. Mm, uh, that's gonna be a 20. Um. It'll hit. Uh, 21 magical bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right, and then this will be Shadow Delen. Okay. For 28. That'll hit. And you continue to roll like a pissant. Uh, 19 magical slashing damage. That's pretty good, but yes, okay. He rolled four. The rest all oh. just come from my bonuses. Oh, got it. Uh, next is regular Delen. It's over 30. For 21 damage. Okay. All right. Uh, back over to Shadow Delen. Uh, 20 again. Uh, she will superior parry that one and counterattack with Sanguine Moon. Does she have unlimited? Oh, she just. She said turn. turn. So Shadow Delen is killed. That was the hope. Um, so one more attack from regular delay. Uh, 24. 24 hits. For another 21 bludgeoning damage. I'm going to tell you this. My girls is not looking hardy or um, long for this um, world. I would right. have crit. I could have done a little bit more, but I believe that is All right. everything that I can do. Uh, end of turn. She is going to... Oh, boy. Teleport as a legendary action to right there. And her, she is eyeing Lucky. Sarah, it is your turn. Uh, Sarah, mm -hmm. as your turn begins, you hear something. Can I make one more attack? For when what? When a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against a target other than you, my shadow, you can use your reaction to make a melee weapon attack. I'm going to argue that your shadow is you in this case. Uh, it counts as a creature. Um, I'm going to argue no. Uh, Sarah, as your turn begins, you hear a voice that you have not heard in quite a while. It is the voice that you heard just after you saved the wolf in the forest. And as you hear it, you feel a wind blowing 
you feel a warmth that you're not used to. And your blade that you carry, the edge of it begins to glow green. All right. Then I will take my free action, pop out a wolf form, and we're going to fucking town. Okay. Sword slashes. Uh, I am going with, given who this is, we're... You know what? No, I got multiple attacks. You attack with advantage. Yep. No, I'm telling you, you attack with advantage. Yep. So let's see. Sword time. With advantage. I don't know why it keeps rolling three dice, but one of those is net. The first one is a natural 20. All right. There's no need to roll damage. You lunge forward, empowered by the spirit of the wolf. Flora and Fauna have been mostly powerless for the better part of this entire reign, their existence here. But when the moment has come, they are there. And indeed, uh, for a moment, your blade is charged with the energies of the forest and one of the last living gods and as you lunge forward, your blade catches right at her shoulder and tears up across her neck and over the front of her face. And unlike every other wound she's been dealt, it does not heal back up. Blood spatters out onto the ground, this black demonic blood. And the wound continues to just bleed down as she drops to her knees and collapses back in a heap. Or want to send their regards. And if she's not dead dead, hasted attack. So, collapsing to the ground in a heap, Queen Scala is laying there dead. Her lips are contorted up into a wicked grin, even as her eyes appear open and lifeless. Perhaps she has found comfort in death after all. For right now, combat is over. Pick up Sanguine Moon. No. <laughs> Do it. I wouldn't recommend it. I would not <laughs> the Whispers in Silence either. learn firsthand. It's not a great time. If uh, they're anything like the things we've encountered so far. So I'm going to summon Shadow Delen, and then I'm going to run over, and I have one potion left, and I'm going to feed to Ariko. Okay. Um, I am going to... Well, no, I've already used the main action, so I can't do anything else. Um, but if I get another turn order, I am doing my last Massacre Wounds. Okay, yeah, go ahead and pop because Massacre this, Wounds. Yeah, I will pop I, Massacre I assume wounds. we all gather up for that. Yeah, we would all gather up for yeah. it. Uh, 7 HP for Erico from the heal. Massacre Wounds. Good numbers, 21 to everybody. The Delenn is near full. Rhea is hopefully not going to die. The key is full. I am hopefully not in death range. And Ariko is tolerably breathe, breathing. Uh, That's yes. my last one, though. Okay. Uh, Ariko makes her way over. Ariko makes her way over and uh, nods, looking at the body of Queen Scala on the ground, and she spits on it. <laughs> well, you're all incredible. <laughs> and uh, I think we'd do well to leave this place. I agree. I don't think that's the end of her yet. Let's book. And you all start heading down. Uh, uh, Miriani needed a break. Let's take five minutes and uh, grab a drink or whatever we need to use the bathroom.
Uh, so I heard what I think might be uh, one of the uh, we'll call it. I don't even know how to properly say this, but like I heard a really good recently dark dark joke that might be near the top of like my oh that's that's real bad. Do you okay. Want to hear it? Yeah, hear why not? I'll, I'll hear it. To say, like, oh, uh, God. Uh, what's the worst part about eating vegetables? What? The oh. Wheelchair. Oh God! I <laughs> as soon as I said <laughs> what, I'm like, ah, oh, I know where this is going. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're okay. No worries. We're uh. All right. Let's pick it up. And uh, let's see. Where's my documents here? <clears throat> so you all got uh, a little bit of healing. Um. And time for a short uh, rest? <laughs> no, you do not have time for a short rest. Uh, what's everyone's passive perception again? Six. Uh, 19. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, you uh, begin retreating down and uh, take the elevator back down towards the bottom floor. Uh, at the bottom floor are the elven captives that you uh, assisted in the escape of. And... Uh, they kind of look at you stunned, I think would be the word for. If you were to see God for the first time, this would probably be a little bit what the face looks like because they're trying to figure out how you have possibly defeated not just Lady Atras, but you've escaped Scala. Uh, it doesn't make sense. But they quickly kind of hurry over and uh, nod. Uh, do we just go with you? Run, follow. And as you hurry towards the door, uh, you reach the base of the tower, uh, and outside you can see that indeed prisoners are fleeing. Uh, elves of Moon Bay, prisoners of war, people of all shapes and sizes hurrying out of the prison ward and back out the entrance that you all made. And I, I, I really need to emphasize, it is thousands upon thousands of people. It is not hundreds of people that are trapped here. It is thousands who are being freed in one fell swoop. Uh, and many are of they, whom... Sorry, go ahead. Are they proceeding in a calm and orderly fashion? I wouldn't say so. I would say they are proceeding in a hurried fashion. Not necessarily panic, but they are being hurried, and you can see... Indeed, Kachiko is there, and so is Brunar, and they are kind of helping usher people along, motioning, hey, here's where to go, telling, hey, as soon as you get out, run straight for the God's of Grass Forest. There's a campment in there where we can't be followed. Keep going. Just keep going. And that is what you see as you uh, step outside. But above head, thunder booms, and lightning strikes down at the top of the tower. The entire land seems to shake as you hear a demonic scream of rage from above. Uh, Ariko grits her teeth and looks back. Fucking bitch just doesn't want to know when she's not wanted. You all go. I'll keep her busy. We'll put her down as many times as we need to. Where are we at right here? Yeah, we're at the... You're at the exit to the tower. Okay. Um, Dylan looks to Ariko and says that won't be necessary. Ariko gives you a look of utter bewilderment and confusion. Someone's going to have to stop her, and it should be me. Someone's already up there. <clears throat> I'll stay with you. No, I... I stayed behind. Um, this is just a clone. Probably be about that time that you notice that Lockheed is holding Echo. Look, y'all just got to keep going, and I... He turns to, um... Uh, Sarah. A little bit, you're a lot smarter than I was ever going to be, so you keep your nose towards good, all right? It's easy for hate and darkness to well up inside and swallow you whole, but that's how she stays so strong. So even with all the bad, you just keep smiling. I Miriani, smile back. 
Your family keeps on getting bigger. So you're going to be okay. Just make sure you keep the rest of them in line. And don't let them do anything too stupid. That was my thing. And then he'll uh, kneel down to Lockie. She is holding her, holding Echo, like, in her arms like this. Yep. Got another present for you. And he'll take out the uh, book of Delinfer and say this. Oh. Uh, is a book I got from the future of another timeline, so I don't know how that happens, but uh, I think it's going to be super important one day, so you hold on to that. All right? Uh, she nods. I'm going to see you again someday. Probably. She and then nods. standing back up, he'll uh, turn to Rhea. And you. I know there's not a day that's gone by since we teamed up that you haven't thought about killing me. You can always see it in your eyes. But I know you only did that because you knew I'd come back. And it seemed to help you somehow. But I don't think you need to vent as much anger now as you did before, so you'll be okay with help me. She'll pull the echo into a hug. Thank I'll you. Say, if you want to stab me one more time for you know, old time's sake, this is probably your last chance to do so. Nah, I'm good at the last one. And he'll release Manifest Echo. And you are all left to hurry on out of the facility as uh, you rush Lockheed to safety and hurry on towards the exit. But back up in the tower, Delenn, you're standing across from Queen Scala. You watch, indeed, as you can see almost these black, viscous tendrils that flow through the land itself and draw up into the tower and suffuse energy into her. And you recognize that this energy is pure malevolence, hatred. As this is happening, I want to talk to the voices in my head. Yep. Be like, all right, I know you said that it's probably going to take, like, months or, like, years for me to master that power of yours of like bringing in multiple people from multiple timelines but you know if you were just saying that because you didn't want me to do it right away like now's the time to let me know because I could really use a little bit of backup Scala stands again fully recharged back up to full HP as it were I'll be with you in just a minute. One sec. I'm on another call. Yeah. And she looks over at you and says, you truly were the greatest of my failures, 16. I think and that Len, technically makes me a success. In your head, you do hear the voice of Mara. She is chanting something. A ritual she began before her death and one which is now being completed in the presence of so much power. <coughs> and indeed, not just one clone appears as you summon your echo, but dozens of them. As the lens from different timelines and worlds enter into the fight to aid you, all of them know that they are going to their death and all of them are ready to make that sacrifice. One of them is armed with just a single fork with the meatball and some spaghetti on it. <laughs> that one's particularly pissed off because he was literally just enjoying dinner. And he's like, ugh, great. And an epic battle ensues. You get a lot of really good shots in there. Well, one of you does, or a number of you do. But it is ultimately a fight that you cannot win. For each time she is struck down, she regenerates again. And while you do hold her for a bit, eventually you are killed. Do you have any final words for Scala as you meet your end? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think he'd keep using like the, the his teleport ability into his clone so that he would be the, the, the last one yeah. there. Suffered a lot of setbacks and a lot of losses recently. But I want you to know that I don't think that your daughter 
hates you the way everyone else does. That's ultimately what's going to what's going to be what kills you. Very prophetic. And with a glee. Well, no. I don't even think she can take glee in it anymore. I think it is just resentment. She cuts you down. But by the time she has, outside, the rest of you have fled into the God's Grasp forest where she cannot reach you. And you find yourselves approaching the encampment, although it looks quite different now as they are having to find room for thousands upon thousands of people who have been freed. They have not spent the last few years doing nothing. After all, they've been building up supplies and stock for this day. Meals are provided, blankets, medicine, a place to rest. And it is as you get back and the adrenaline begins to wear down a little bit that finally, maybe for Laki, the realization of what has happened begins to set in on her and she buries her face into Uriah and starts to cry. Rhea will hold her and cry too. Uh, Miriani, Sarah, you see her look out and motion for you to join. Oh yeah, absolutely. As you take a moment to process. You can't help but look at the thousands of freed people and know that a great many of them are going to want very much a chance to ensure that nothing like this happens to anyone else. You know in your hearts that something has changed here today, something that will never be changed back. that end. As we move into our epilogue. The liberation of Moon Bay doesn't actually refer to the day Moon Bay was liberated. That day wouldn't come for many more years. But it saw the true turn in the war and the beginning of Queen Scala's decline. With the jailbreak at Moon Bay, thousands of people joined rebellions occurring all over the continent. Many went to Mountain's End, where the allied forces of Serene held against the demonic assault, establishing a stronghold that Queen Scala would never again break. In Uld Scala, the queen growls angrily as purple flames lap at her, the rage emanating off of her. She gazes in the mirror, a long cut running from her neck over her cheek, her own demonic blood continuing to spill out of it, a wound that will never heal, and a reminder that she, like everyone else, can bleed. In the encampment set up in the God's Grasp, Ariko looks out one morning to see Miriani talking with Kachiku and Suliana, her children all in one place if only for a moment. A single tear drips down her cheek as she smiles. In Stone's Throw, a one-armed elf kneels before a grave in the cemetery. Tears slide down her face as she reaches out and touches it. I can't stay here any longer. I'm only hurting our cause with the queen's monsters hunting me. Know this, Frigga. I always loved you. And the people you gave your life for are going to change this world. And she stands, heading out of town towards the northeast. In the Fey Forest, a pixie excitedly approaches Titania. Do you think they succeeded, my queen? And Titania smiles, nodding. They have. And we will be called to aid them one day. 
we had best be prepared. In River's Meat, a young man swings his blade, cleaving the head from a monster. At one time, it would have scared him to tears, yet now he's learned to face those fears. Alexi, come on, new orders, calls one of the companions, and he nods. On my way. In the newly named Lorelei's Meat, Sarissa wipes sweat off her brow as she finishes pulling up weeds in the field. The sun has been overbearing today, and just when she feels like it's too much to bear, a, calm, cool, a calming cool wind blows by. A smile tugs at her cheeks. Was that you, my love? She asks. In the distance, she sees her child approaching, and her heart swells. And in the Geist Moor, four spirits arrive many decades later than expected. A woman sits on a stump. She has tanned skin and bright red hair with beautiful blue eyes, though she looks ashamed and afraid as the other person approaches. Hello, Iris. Iris looks away, crossing her arms. I'm sorry, Zana. I'm so sorry. And she lets out a squeak as she is pulled into a hug from her lover. We're dead, my love. We go now to be reborn, and I do not wish the last thing I feel in this lifetime to be hatred. We have had our fill of that. Come, let's go. Deeper in the Geist Moor, a man stands before Boss, tears dripping down his cheeks. The god of death tilts his head. Why do you weep, Shanek? He asks. The tiefling looks down. I have damned my people for generations to come. My accursed blood has been used to ensure they will be hated for a millennia. Boss nods in understanding. And yet you will have the chance to undo what you have done in this lifetime. This I promise, if you have the courage. Shanek looks up, eyes wide, and nods eagerly. I'll do anything, please, he begs. Boss simply smiles and bids him forward onto a long bridge, one so far that the end cannot be seen. Then go, Kaldana, and live again. And in Mountain's End, Laki giggles as she runs around with the other children in her class. Despite her appearance, she made friends quickly, her personality as infectious as it is. And despite the horrors of the world, the efforts of the Queen's Lament have ensured she will find some joy in her childhood. And through their sacrifice and hardship would that fateful day come to pass 20 years later. I'm sure having a toy dragon that turns into a real dragon and Echo as a sword had nothing to do with why she was so popular. She actually doesn't have the dragon. That didn't make it. But she has, she has the sword. A year later... The Queen's Lament all reunite in Mountain's End. They stand on a hill to the east of the city, where a series of graves sit. Rhea, you look down at the marker signifying Adana's final resting place, as well as your children's. Miriani, there is one there for the people of your village. Sarah, one is there for your mother and family. And there is one there that does not have a name on it. It was Lockheed's idea, as she thought Delenn would prefer that. Nevertheless, she lays a flower on it and bows her head politely. And that is the end. But I spent the last year telling you all a story about your characters. I think it's time for you all to tell me a story about your characters. There's 20 more years before you will all meet your ends at the hands of Scala, allowing Laki to ignite. What do your characters do for the next 20 years? What is their life like? Do they find joy and happiness? Sorrow? Struggle? What do they dedicate themselves to? <laughs> Robbie, you don't have to answer. Something. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, I was going to say, Mariani would keep going around being part of the, hey, the rah, rah, fight the power stuff. You continue being a freedom fighter. Yeah, that's kind of her whole 
thing that is her whole purpose nobody else have to deal with uh, the kind of stuff she did and the day comes where rumors start to spread out throughout the uh, throughout Scala's ranks of the laughing elf that way uh, that rides the shadow steed your legend your uh, stories are as vast and uh, varied <laughs> as any could have in this era Sarah what do you do I said once her family and her village and her people perished and the people of South grass perished that she would plant a forest in their honor and she is going to do that and every tree that she plants will be said with a prayer honoring them and if she knows the name she will say the name at the end starting with her family obviously yep. and she will do that for five years and she will come back and help Rhea raise Lucky and make her into the finest being that she could. Yeah. Honoring family and that halfling tradition. And you do. And indeed, the forest that you plant is grand. And it still exists hundreds of years later. The Sarah Forest continues to live on in just south of Beatrice and Terran, across the river. And it is said that if you go there, you can hear the whispers of the souls the forest is dedicated to. Kara, what does Rhea get up to over the next 20 years, besides, I presume, raising Lockheed? Uh... God, I didn't think this far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You were dead last time we played. Why would you? Um, that's a solid point. Wherever I know what it's called in the future, I don't know what it's named here, but wherever they settle down, mountains end. Just... I thought that was off to the north, but okay. It is. It will be called Savior's Cradle in the distant future. Uh, I'm thinking of a different place. Yes, uh, you're, at, you're at Mountain's End, which will in the future be called Savior's Cradle because it's where Lockheed comes from. Rhea is just going to protect Mountain's End and teach Lockheed all of the tiefling traditions Rhea's grandmother would have passed on to her. Beautiful. And uh, it is notable that while Lorelei does not have temples in very many cities in the era of the Whispers, she does have a temple in Mount or in Savior's Cradle that is said to be almost as old as the one that is in Lorelei's Meat. And Robbie, do I get to go? Yeah, I had one. Yeah, thing. you can go. So uh, Delenn was told by Queen Titania that at one point. He was Faye. He was. So I think at some point he's reincarnated. Um, and whether or not he remembers any of his life, I suppose, is up for debate or interpretation or whatever. And I don't know how far Mountain's End is from the Faye Forest, but somehow, after like five years, Lockie manages to make a friend with a pixie that helps her get up to as much trouble as she did with Delenn. I like that. Indeed, there is a moment, Delenn, as you are in the Geistmoor, when you go to Boss. Boss looks at you and tells you that you are needed yet. That there will be a time where you are required still, as you are, but a piece of you, your essence, is taken. And that essence incarnates as a fairy. 
that very quickly becomes one of Lockheed's closest friends and absolutely the bane of Rhea's existence. <laughs> and 20 years later, Jem, after your friends have all arrived and you see them all again and you are able to learn that Laki has ignited into the goddess of heroes, although she calls herself the daughter of heroes. She appears before you and she asks each of you if she may have your service in death as she had it in life. Presumably, you all agree. No hesitation. Not a question to be asked. Yep. The end. Thank you, everyone, for participating in Scholar Rain. <laughs>